Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about using media in your online family tree. We're going to talk about some basics, about uploading photos in bulk or individually to your tree, how to make pictures a profile picture. We're going to talk then about some best practices, things that will help you um, work with your media a little bit better, things that will help all of us um, as a genealogy community as we view and interact with media on the Ancestry website. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's talk first about uploading media in bulk. So let's say, for example, that I have two or three dozen pictures on my computer and I want to upload them to my tree, but I don't want to do it one photo at a time. One of the things that you can do is you can just upload, bulk upload media to your online tree. So here's my media gallery. You find it under the tree pages link when you're on your tree page. This is the media gallery. I can come in here and I can click add media upload it from my computer, and then I can select multiple files on my computer that I want to upload. So I could just come in here and I could just select every one of these photographs that I am interested in uploading, and then I could click open and it would upload all of those photos at once into my tree. Now that's great, except that I haven't actually attached it to anyone at that point. At that point, I just have photos sitting in my media gallery and I need to then attach them to individuals. So I can go back then into the media gallery and I can do that. I can bring up any particular photo and I can attach it to anybody that I want to attach it to. So I can just attach to a person or another person um, in that photograph or that document. So that's a quick, easy way to upload a whole bunch of photos at once, and then you can go back through your media gallery one photo at a time and attach those as needed to the individual people. You also can upload media from any individual person's profile. So I can come in here, for example, to my great-great-grandfather, and I can click on his gallery, and that will show me what photos and documents I have attached to him. And if I want to upload a new photo, again, I can just click on that link, come find that photo, and it will attach it specifically to that individual. I can also do that from this Add button here. It'll just take me to that same upload page where I can upload a document and it will attach it directly to him. So, just a quick recap. If I'm using the media gallery from my tree page, that will upload bulk photos and then I have to go through one at a time and attach them to who I want to attach them to. If I want to only attach a photo to a single individual, I can come into the gallery in their profile and add that photo or multiple photos to that specific individual. Okay, so that's how photo uploading works. Now the other way we get photos is from our hints. So you can come into hints and you can scroll down and sometimes if there's any photos of that individual, such as here's a photo of him, here's a photo of his tombstone, and then I can just simply click attach photo, and now that photo will appear in my gallery, okay? So there's the photo. Now I already have it, so in this case, because I already have a copy of that photo, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Now the question, of course, is gonna be, well, then why did I get a hint if I already had a copy of that photo? Well, this brings me to some of our best practices. One of the things that you need to know um, is that whenever you save a photo from someone else's tree, whether you're on their tree and you're saving it from there, or whether you're using hints and saving it from there, you need to use those save features, that attach photo feature in hints, or when you're on their tree, the save photo to someone in your tree feature. There's a couple of reasons why we need to do this. One is because it preserves the data and the connections. So I can come in here to any one of these photos and I can click on it and it will tell me exactly who else has saved this photo and where this photo originated. And as genealogists, we know that the source or the origin of something is really important. So in this case, the original person who saved it might have more information might have, um, maybe has a copy of the original photo itself, 
uh, maybe lives near this particular cemetery, whatever the case may be. And so the origin of that photo, the source of that photo, is important to preserve. And so in this case, when I saved it, appropriately, it maintained the origin of that photo. And it also tells me anyone else who has saved this photo to their tree. And I could click on any one of these profile pictures and it would take me to that person's profile so that I know where in their tree they're also connected to this individual. So by using the proper saving techniques, you maintain those connections. Also, comments. So I could make a comment here on this particular photo and anybody who is also attached this photo to their tree will be able to see that comment. So comments on photos are global. That means that anybody can see the photo, anybody that has attached that photo can see those comments. And so we want to make sure that when we're commenting on those photos, that those comments are accurate and that they're useful comments. For example, if I knew a story about this couple or something about their funeral or something about the location where they're buried, that might be something useful that I could put into the comments. If it was a photograph of my great grandmother, um, I could explain a memory of her or something that I felt was useful to share with the rest of the individuals who had attached that particular photo. So comments on photos are global and whenever we save a photo from someone else's tree or using the hint feature, use the appropriate save process to preserve that data and those connections. Now, some of you are wondering what, what I might be talking about when I say use it appropriately. There are some people who will download the photo to their computer and then re-upload it to their tree as if it was an original um, photo that they have in their possession. And that disconnects it from the rest of the, the community of genealogists and really the community of your family, right? So there are pictures all over um, ancestry of, of this set of great-great-grandparents, and it's because um, when Sarah died at the age of 92, she had 93 living descendants, and that was 60 years ago. So that number has just continued to grow, and she now has hundreds of descendants, and a couple dozen of them have trees on ancestry. And so, so more people than just me are interested in her, even though she's my great-great-grandmother. And sometimes we forget that and, and um, don't take that into account when we're looking at some of these media items. So that's, that's my pitch for saving photos appropriately and for using comments appropriately. Another best practice that I would encourage is that you only upload a photo or document once even if it relates to multiple people. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say you have a, a portrait, a family portrait. You've got seven people in that particular picture. You only want to upload that photo once and then attach it to all seven people. You're not going to upload it seven times once to each person on the tree. There are also documents where this, this happens. So for example, if I have a death certificate that lists the individual and his parents and his spouse, I'm not going to upload four different copies of that and attach it to those four people. I'm going to upload it once and attach it to all four people. Same thing goes with some of those um, icons and um, tree management images that some of you use, and I use them as well, and let me show you what I'm talking about when I say that. So in my tree, um, one of the things that I want to be able to keep track of is who it is that died as children um, so that I know not to keep looking for descendants or who it is that died uh, that got married and then never had any children or who it is that never married or never you know, lived to adulthood but never married and never had any children. And so I've created um, these icons that I can use uh, in my tree to mark those people. And rather than upload this image every single time I come across one of those people, I just come in here and I attach it to those specific individuals that it applies to. And there's a couple of benefits of this. One is I only have the photo once in my photo gallery, so it's not clogging it all up. I only have the photo once on Ancestry servers, so again, not clogging it all up because I've uploaded it hundreds of times. And it also allows me at a really quick glance to see this whole list of individuals in my tree who meet this specific criteria. And then at any time I can just come in here and attached to another person in my tree. So not only is it a good practice 
for um, space saving reasons and for clutter decluttering reasons, but it also then starts to serve as a way to sort things in my tree. I know I've seen some of you who have icons for people who served in the military or people who were immigrant ancestors or whatever the case may be. And that's great that you need, that you want to use those visual representations in your tree or those um, research tools in your tree. Just make sure you only upload that photo once and then attach it to multiple people. Now, if this isn't something that you've done in the past, you can really easily clean it up. You just come into your photo gallery and say I had you know, two copies of this image showing up here. I would go to one, write down the names of the people I had attached to that one, and then come in here, attach those people to this one so that I could delete the other image. It's a little bit of cleanup work, but it's gonna be worth it um, when you recognize that it's gonna help you manage your media a lot better. So only upload a photo or document once, even if it relates to multiple people. Another thing that's going to help you is do not reattach documents already in Ancestry. If I come in here to this particular great-grandfather of mine, I can see that I have already located him in uh, the 1900, the 1910, and the 1920 U.S. Federal Censuses. It's listed right there in the center under my sources. I love that those are front and center. But I can come into my gallery and you'll see that I also have that 1900, 1910, and 1920 census image available there for me to view. I did not put those there. Those are put there by nature of the fact that I attached that document as a source to this individual in my tree. So if I had gone through and created a copy of these documents and then uploaded them, I would have multiple copies of these census images on this particular tree. So again, you'll end up bloating your media file and it'll make it more um, difficult um, to work with. It'll make it a lot less manageable. So don't, there's no need to re-upload those particular uh, images. Anything you, anything you upload from and, or attach from Ancestry automatically creates an image in the gallery for that individual and for those family members as well. Okay, let's talk about now working with the media once you've got it in your tree. There are some things that you can do that will help you keep track of things, keep things organized, and help the presentation of your family data uh, look a little better. One is to categorize date and name photos for easier searching and sorting. Now, in the new Ancestry experience, we're still working on some of these things based on some feedback we've received from many of you. But you'll notice every one of my photos here has a name. And if I click on one of those photos, there are a couple of other things that I'm going to be able to see. Um, I'm going to click edit here in this top corner. So this photo has a name. It then has a category here where I can say, what kind of media is this? And that allows me to list what it is. In this case, it's a portrait. But my options are portrait, place, headstone, document and certificate, or other. So if I had a photograph of the house they lived in, that might be a place. If I had a photo of their tombstone, if I had a copy of his death certificate that I got from somewhere other than Ancestry, whatever the case may be, I can categorize that media appropriately. And again, taking the time to do this as I upload my media or as I attach new media is going to help me later as my media file grows to be able to sort through some of those things. So I'm going to mark this as a portrait. Next there is a date. Now the default for this is going to be the date you uploaded the photo. And that's because Ancestry has no way of knowing when you upload a photo when that photo was taken. And so um, you can leave that or you can add a specific date to this person. Now, I happen to know that this particular photo was taken shortly before he died. I don't know exactly when, and so I'm going to put in an about and 1926, okay? So that puts in that particular location, uh, or that particular date. I can then put in a location if I want. Um, I'm not certain, so I'm not going to put it in, but I could put in, you know, I know he died um, in Pocatello, Idaho, or in Twin Falls, Idaho, and I can put that in the location. I can also add any description or any additional story information that I know about this photo so that anybody who copies this photo from my tree to theirs will have that same information traveling with that particular photo. 
So um, that's how that works. Now, down here below in this edit panel, you're going to see who this in this particular photo is saved to. If it was saved to multiple people, you would see their names listed. But I can click on that, and it will t allow me to either use this as the profile image for this person or not. So in this case, I do want this to be his profile picture, so I have that checked. But if I wanted to remove this as his profile picture, I could uncheck this and go to another photo and check that. I also have the option here in this edit panel to remove this photo from this person. So if I found out this isn't really him, or I somehow attached it to the wrong person, whatever the case may be, I can remove that particular photo from that person as well. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't delete the photo, it just detaches it from this individual. When I'm working in an individual profile, I'm working with that individual's media, I'm not working um, with all of my media together. If I want to actually delete the photo, um, I need to go into my media gallery, click on that trash can, and that will delete the photo altogether. Okay, so that is how you set profile photos. Uh, that's how you make sure that you've got your photos categorized and labeled and named correctly. Again, you're just going to open up any one of those photos, click on the little edit icon up here. That's going to allow me to make sure that the photo is categorized and dated and location um, and all of that information is correct and accurate. The reason that becomes important is now in the individual media gallery we have some sort and, and filter options. Under the show button I can say well you know what really I only want to see the photos. Now I only have a few things in this individual's gallery but what if I had 30 documents or 30 photos or, or a combination of both. This is a really quick way to filter down to just the specific records that I'm interested in by using these filters or this show feature. Okay. The other thing I can do here is I can sort. So I can sort it by media type, uh, where it puts things in groups, or I can sort it by the date added from newest to oldest or from oldest to newest, or if I've been really particular about a naming convention for my images, I can sort them alphabetically. So it gives you lots of different ways to both filter and sort your media for any given individual. And then of course you can come over here and add those things as well. So we're trying to make working with the media in your individual profile easier um, for searching and for sorting. We're also still working on the overall media gallery experience to implement some of those same things. Now, um, this is um, a big issue and I just want to make sure that, that I address it. Anytime you upload a document to your tree, and when I say document, what I'm talking about is a birth certificate or a marriage certificate or a land deed or a, whatever the case may be. Usually they're things that you have found other places. I've ordered a certificate from the General Register's office in England or I wrote to the county courthouse and they sent me a set of land records and I have I've taken photographs or digitized those in some way, scanning them or, or you know, taking a picture with my phone or whatever the case may be. And now I have this image of a document that I want to upload to my tree. If it's an actual document, that document is a source, okay? And we've talked a lot in the past about source citations and the importance of that. If you're not familiar with that terminology, um, go to YouTube, go to the Ancestry channel on YouTube. You can type in uh, what is a source, and I've done a video about that. I also have an entire series about the genealogical proof standard where we talk about um, citing our sources and the importance of that. So these documents are sources. There are other things that are sources as well that are not documents, things like tombstones. A photograph of a tombstone is a source. Um, sometimes even photographs can serve as a source. For example, I have a photograph of my grandfather uh, as a baby and three of his sisters are in that photograph. And there was some confusion about whether one of those sisters died before or after he was born. Well, there they are in the same photograph, so that becomes a source um, that helps to prove out her death information. So lots of things can be sources, but let's talk just about documents for a minute. What you're going to do is you're going to want to create a source citation, and then you're going to attach the media item 
to the source citation that you've created and then attach the source to the facts that it pertains to. This is going to be a lot cleaner, a lot neater, and a lot more genealogically sound than just attaching photos to a source. And let me explain a little bit why that is. Let's say, for example, that I have a death certificate. I've ordered the death certificate from the county. Um, they're the only ones who hold it, so I can't find it online anywhere. So I've got this certificate in the mail. I've taken a photograph of it with my phone. I now I'm uploading that photo to my tree. I upload it to my tree and a lot, of, a lot of you, what you're doing is you're creating a death fact and then you're attaching the death certificate to that fact. And I understand why that might seem like the right thing to do, but the problem is a death certificate has information that supports a lot more facts than just the death. So for example, death certificates very often list a birth date and place, and parents' names, and parents' birthplaces. Sometimes they list a burial location and date, a spouse's name, if they served in the military, what their full name is, right? All of these are facts that you have in your tree. So what I do is I create a source citation for that certificate, then I attach that certificate to the source citation. Now, once I've done that really easily, I can just go through and say, well, this death certificate contains information that pertains to the name and the gender and the birth date and the birthplace and the parents' names and the parents' birthplaces and his military service and his spouse's name and his death date and death place and his burial date and burial place. Okay, do you see the difference? A, a document is a source and we need to be treating it like a source. And so the new ancestry experience kind of forces us a little bit into that proper genealogical methodology. So when you have documents, upload them, attach them to a source citation, and then attach that source to the person and the facts. It'll still show up in your media gallery. That's the great news. So you'll still have ready access to it there. Now let's talk just briefly about Family Tree Maker. If you have Family Tree Maker, and your family tree maker is synced to your online tree. One of the additional features that you have is that you can privatize specific pieces of media, okay? So let's say, for example, I have a public tree on Ancestry, for example, which I do, okay? So I have this public tree on Ancestry. What that means is that anybody can see anything I put in my tree that pertains to deceased people. So if the people in my tree are living, and I've attached photographs or documents to them, nobody's gonna be able to see those things or the name of that person, it'll just say living or private um, because those people are still living. But anybody deceased, they're gonna be able to see whatever photos or documents I've attached, whatever source citations I've connected through Ancestry or created on my own, whatever the case may be, okay? But I have a few photos in my tree, actually I think there's about seven of them, that I received from a cousin. And for whatever reason, when this cousin um, gave me these photos, it was on the condition that I would not publish them on the web, that I would not put them in my online tree and make them available to others. Now, I wanted those copies of those photos for myself and for my family, but I also want my tree to be public. And so in Family Tree Maker, I can go into each of those individual pieces of media and I can mark them as private and then they do not get shown on my tree, even if that particular person happens to be deceased. So that's just a little extra bonus, something that you have available to you if you have Family Tree Maker. The other thing about Family Tree Maker is anytime you attach a document through Ancestry, remember we talked about doing that and not adding it as an additional media item, anytime I attach a document in Ancestry, that will also download to my hard drive on my computer when I sync my Family Tree Maker with my online tree at Ancestry. So that just gives you a little bit more control, a little bit more functionality. Family Tree Maker also allows me to tag photos a little bit more granularly. So for example, I have all my pictures or portraits. I also can note if they're of an individual or a group, and that allows me to do some of that as well. So just some, some extra benefits there if you are using Family Tree Maker in conjunction 
with your online tree. Well, I hope this has been a useful overview of using media in your online tree. It was meant just to be an overview, just to give you some best practices, some information about where some of those buttons have been moved to or some of the new features are in the new Ancestry experience. If you have specific questions and you're watching this live, I will be on chat in just a few minutes to answer any of those questions. If you're watching an archived version of this on YouTube, feel free to leave your questions in the comments and I will monitor those and answer those as necessary. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun coming your family tree.